ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ما بعد الحمد لله we are approaching and inshallah we will conclude uh, the last part of this surah the surah that we're going through the surah that we're going through is surah al-hujurat and if you remember surah al-hujurat speaks about three rights what are the rights that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about in this surah let us make it more engaging. Mm -hmm. The first right, the most important right, which is mm -hmm. yeah, the, the right of Allah. This is what Allah Azza wa Jal starts off with the surah. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yadayillah. Do not put yourself forward or in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever Allah Azza wa Jal uh, commands us. What are the verses in the Quran that reminds us of this? Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, "Wain tuti'u Allaha wa Rasulahu." It is always Allah Subhanahu wa Taala first and foremost, and then it is the command of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the first right. The second right is. People at the back. What is the command after the Prophet, uh, after Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Abdullah, Muhammad, you're looking at each other. What is the command after Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Can someone help? Is no, the Rasul. The command of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So first the right is the right of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Secondly it is the right of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Surah وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ hmm. The third right What is the third right? Hmm? Isa, you're looking down what is the third right? Good, very good, mashallah. So it is the right that we have upon each other as Muslims. That as a Muslim, you need to look after the rights of uh, another Muslim. Haqqul Muslim ala al-Muslim. How many are they? Does anyone remember? It is, in some hadith it mentions, khamsa. And some other hadith it mentions six. Mm. What are the rights? Mm? Yes. Yeah. What's that? Huh? The ird. You good. Mashallah. This is a, a separate one. But what is mentioned in the hadith? The six. Yes, Muhammad. Good. Raddu salam. One. Very good. Allah barik. <laughs> Again, Muhammad. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, Tashmeetul uh, Muslim. Very good. So, uh, how do you do that, Muhammad? Mm -hmm. Good. And then? Yahdikum Allah yusdihbalakum. Very good, mashallah. So we have two. What are the other ones? Visiting the sick. Mm -hmm. Visiting the sick. Very good, mashallah. And then? Accepting the invitation. Yes, accepting the invitation. Very good, Allah barik. And then we have? Yes, the, 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 the salam we mentioned, but the janaza. The janaza, itba'ul janaza. Very good, mashallah. And then we have a sixth one. What would that be? Uh, keeping trust. Mm. Yeah. 
this is not uh, the, it is part of the uh, the relations of a Muslim, but it's not mentioned in the hadith. Give sincere advice. Ah, good, mashallah. Jazakallah So, it does So, this is the sixth point to uh, give uh, sincere advice. So, if your brother in Islam, or your sister in Islam, asks you for sincere advice, then you give sincere advice. Very good. Allah barik. So, let us continue. The last part of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Qalatil Arabu Amanna. Qalatil Arabu Amanna. That the Arab, the Bedouins, the people that lived outside the city of Medina, they said, We have believed. And Allah Azza wa Jal tells them, Qullam tu'minu. You have not believed. So when they say, We have believed, they're trying to assert their iman with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and later on we're going to find out that they want to show it as a favor upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but we know that iman belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a favor upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but it is something that benefits the person so we need to break this down Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا Rather say that we have aslamna, we have submitted ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this is very important. Islam and Iman, when they are mentioned together, there's a difference. Islam and Iman, when they're mentioned together, there's a difference. Islam is the first level and then once you perfect your Islam you move beyond that and you move on to Iman and the highest level is Ihsan this is why Jibreel alayhi salam when he came down in Hadith Jibreel what did he say he asked what is Islam what is Iman what is Ihsan? So here the people, they're trying to make it seem as if they are true believers. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrects them. And he says, you're not true believers. You have not believed. We have submitted ourselves. Islam, in the language, it is submission to submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what does Allah Azza wa Jalla say in Surah Al-Baqarah Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu al-khulu fi silmi kafa fi silmi kafa meaning enter Islam completely we are not the type of people that pick and choose when it comes to our Iman. أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرِّ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ So, Islam needs to be accepted completely. So we don't uh, choose Whatever we believe, whatever has reve been revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do we say? Hmm? We say, Samirna wa ta'ana. Samirna wa ta'ana. We hear and we obey. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that these A'rab, uh, the Bedouins, are people who say they have believed when in reality they've only entered Islam. And the A'rab, the Bedouins, usually in Islam, they are mentioned as people that are very harsh. What does Allah Azza wa Jalla say in uh, Surah Tawbah? Al-A'rabu hmm? ashaddu kufran wa nifaqan. It is not that all of the Bedouins are like this, but usually people who are away from the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
they are uh, this type of people Arabu ashaddu kufran wa nifaqan wa ajdaru alla ya'lamu hudud Allah good very good mashallah so this Arab Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says walamma yalkhulu al-imanu fi qulubikum and iman has not entered your heart uh, iman has not entered your heart and at the same time Allah Azza wa says, وَإِن تُطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لَا يَلِتْكُمْ مِنْ أَعْمَالِكُمْ شَيْئًا That if you obey the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then none of your deeds will go in vain. So, obeying the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this comes in four points. When you say, أَشَهَدُوا أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَأَشَهَدُوا أَنَّ مُحَمَّدْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam there are four points that need to be fulfilled and we've mentioned this before can anyone remember what are the four points when you say uh, that uh, you believe in the Prophet Sallallahu mm. the students at the back mm? good yes mm. the students at the back if, yes good very good Hmm? Huh? Okay, good. But we need to be more specific. Yes, Abdullah? The hadith, good. Okay. But I want it in points. Yes. Good. Very good, mashallah. So we'll put it in four points. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. So let's put it in, in ways that we can remember. First of all, it is ta'atuhu fi am fi ma amar. Ta'atuhu fi ma amar. That we follow the Prophet ﷺ in that which he commanded us. Tastiquhu fi ma akbar. To believe in the Prophet ﷺ in what he told us. When the Prophet ﷺ is telling us about yom al qiyamah when he's telling us, uh, us about uh, Jahannam and Jannah and all these things, we believe in him. Tastiquhu fi ma akhbar And it is uh, to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that which wajtinabu ma naha anhu wa zajar to stay away from the things that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us to stay away from. And these things are found in where? In Surah Hashar, students. Where is it mentioned in Surah Hashar? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, the students are a bit quiet. وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ Abu Bakr. وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَا عَنْكُمْ فَانْتَهُ So these are things uh, that are found in the Sunnah. And finally it is وَأَلَّا يُعْبَدَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا بِمَا شَرَعَ To not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that which uh, the Prophet sallallahu has told us. Okay. Who can repeat the four things? Mm. Everyone is very quiet. Mm. Anyone from the students? What were the four, uh, four things that we mentioned? Mm. Yeah, good, yes? Mm -hmm. The first one was? Hmm. What's happening? Abdul Rahman, repeat it. Ta'atuhu. Ta'atuhu fi ma amar. And tastiquhu fi ma akbar. Wa alla yu'abad Allah illa ma shara' wa jishtinabu ma naha anhu wa zajar. These are the four things. Very good, mashallah. It's okay. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, 
إنما المؤمنون الذين آمنوا بالله ورسوله. Whenever we find in the Quran where it says إنما, this is known in uh, Arabic as adat hasr, meaning they are the only ones إنما, the only ones that truly believe in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the uh, Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are those that ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا Those that have no doubt Raib in Islam in the Arabic language it refers to people who have doubt There's difference between shak and raib What is the difference between shak and raib? Shak is where you are in between Okay You have doubt but raib is more leaning towards not believing in it this is why Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran Alif la meem thalika al kitabu la raiba fi there is no doubt in this Quran whatsoever so raib and shak are different things so here Allah Azza wa Jalla is telling us thumma lam yartabu fi that they have no doubts about Islam. There's an important point here. Sometimes shaitan comes to us and he whispers. Right? The waswas. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas, min shar al-waswasil khannas, alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas. Very good. This waswas, it happens to everyone. Just because the waswas comes to you doesn't mean that you're not a Muslim. But what are our obligations when it comes to waswas? What do we do? We repel it. That we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the waswas. So here the doubt is not the doubts that come and go, but it's the doubts that persist. So if a person is persistent upon their doubt, then this becomes an issue. But if the doubt comes and you repel it with Iman, then Alhamdulillah, Anta ala khair, you are upon good. But to entertain these doubts, then this becomes an issue. ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ And then they strive with their, uh, their wealth and their nafs. Two things. I want you all to pay attention. The wealth you spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially today in the society that we live in, with brothers and sisters that are in need in Palestine and other places you spend whatever you can whatever you can afford وَأَنفُسِهِمْ and their lives the Sahaba are the best example they fought for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they spread Islam the reason why Islam has reached many of our countries is because of the sacrifice of the Sahaba. Once the Prophet Sallallahu passed away and even during his lifetime, they went far and wide to spread the message of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So to fight and to spend your wealth, health, everything that you have for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a praiseworthy thing. Fi sabilillah. Ula'ika humusadiqoon. Those are the truthful, uh, truthful ones. Meaning, everyone can speak. We hear khutbah upon khutbah lecture upon lecture people who say this and that 
but like they say speech is cheap but action is what really counts so to follow up your speech with actions this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about those are the truthful ones and as leaders we lead by example Allah Azza wa Jalla says Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu In Surah Saf What does Allah Azza wa Jalla say? Sabbaha lillahi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu Lima taquluna Ma la taf'alun Then It is upon us To lead by example Lead by actions And this is what really connects hearts to hearts because if you say something and you don't implement it yourself, then this becomes an issue. This becomes an issue. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Qul atu'alimun Allah bi dinikum. Wallahu yaalamu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Wallahu bi kulli shayin alim." These people they try to mention to the uh, to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to Allah Azza wa Jalla. As if it was a favor upon Allah and the Messenger of Allah. We've believed. Be happy with us. But Allah Azza wa Jal tells them that Allah Azza wa Jal knows all affairs. So he doesn't benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the least. What does Allah Azza wa Jal say in Surah Al Dhariyat? Hmm. Yes, good. Yes, Jazakallah khairan. In Allah, huwa razzaqu dhul quwwatil mateen. In Allah, huwa razzaqu dhul quwwatil mateen. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, in the verses before, Allah azza wa jalla says, Ma uridu minkum jaza'an. Ma uridu minkum mirizqin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, Allah azza wa jalla says, Allahu samad. Allahu samad. Do you know what a samad means? Al-Samad, the scholars in Islam, they've said, Al-Samad is the one that everything else, all the creation, are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient. Allah azza wa jalla does not need them. What does Allah azza wa jalla say in Surah Al-Fatir? Ya ayuhu al To other verse. يا أيها الناس أنتم الفقراء إن الله إن يشاء وما ذلك بعزيز. so Allah سبحانه وتعالى throughout the Quran from the beginning until the end Allah عز وجل tells us that Allah عز وجل is not in need of the creation but we are the ones that are in need of Allah سبحانه وتعالى The final two verses, and inshallah we'll conclude here. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Yamununa alayka an aslamu." Yamununa alayka an aslamu. That they use as a man upon you. To that uh, they become Islam, uh, become Muslims. That they've entered Islam. Man, as we mentioned before. It is to mention favor upon others, and this is something that we all fall into. You tell your brother, your sister, someone. Remember when I did this for you? Remember when I did that for you? This is not part of Islam. You should never ever do it. Who does the man that is mentioned in the Quran? Is these people 
and also who else it is Fir'aun the best best example is Fir'aun who does Fir'aun do men upon hmm? Musa alayhi salam Musa alayhi salam he mentions to Musa the favors that he has done upon him and this is haram in Islam if you do something you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you don't hold people accountable for it you've given 10 pounds 100 pounds you've helped a person but don't do it for the sake of them returning it back to you if there's an agreement then alhamdulillah this is khair but to do men this is uh, something that is not part of Islam what does Allah Azza wa say in Surah Baqarah Qawlun ma'roofun hmm? Mm -hmm. so especially when you give sadaqah to give sadaqah and to follow it up with men or other this becomes a problem and Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Qul la tu'al la tu'man, qul la tamunu alayya Islamakum." Do not use your Islam as a man. If you accept accept Islam, then this is for your own sake, for your own akhirah. Man amla salihata, man amla salihan, min dakeri na unta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the other part of the Quran? Mm -hmm. So if you do good, it is for your own sake. And if you do wrong, this is upon you. So never ever use your Islam to justify your actions. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Balillahu yamunu alaykum." It is rather Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that has shown you His fadl and aslamu that you have become Muslims. And this connects us to the issue of tawfiq. That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given you tawfiq. For you to be in the masjid today at this moment it is not because of your own actions it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted you to be here so if you understand this point you understand a big portion of Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that has guided you towards the khair and the final verse of the surah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Inna Allah yaalamu ghayb al-samawati wal-ard." That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows the ghayb of the samawat and the ard. Ghayb is in two parts. There is ghayb kulli and ghayb nisbi. If you ask anyone. When will Yom Al Qiyamah be? Yes, Alun and Kani Saati, Ayana, Mursaha. Who knows this? Hmm? Yes? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qul inna ma ilmuha inda rabbi. That only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this type of ghayb. But the second type of ghayb, it is ghayb nisbi meaning that you can find out okay so for example is it going to rain tomorrow hmm? do you know can you find out you can <laughs> you go on your phone and you check what's the our forecast for tomorrow you can find out if it's going to rain tomorrow so there's different types of ghayb but the ultimate ghayb who does it belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Allah ya'lamu ghayb as-samawati wal ard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the ghayb of the heavens and the earth 
And then finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is a reminder for all of us, Allah azza wa jalla says, Allahu basirun bima ta'amadun. Allahu basirun bima ta'amadun. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything that you do. And this is one of those verses that when we read it, we should, it, it should have an effect upon us. Does anyone know the, the final verse of the Quran that was revealed? Inshallah, we'll stop here. What was the f final verse of the Quran that was revealed? Hmm? Yes? Muhammad? Hmm. Mashallah, very good. We mentioned this earlier today. Sahih. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ ثُمَّ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ This was the last verse that was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the point here is, it is connected to this part of the surah. وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِمَا تعملون, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything that you're doing whether you're in front of people whether you are by yourself <laughs> whether you are anywhere else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees and he knows so alhamdulillah alhamdulillah alladhi bi ni'matihi tathimu salihat we have concluded this surah and inshallah hopefully we'll continue uh, the next class bi idhnillah will be in terms of the Ashrat al -sa the Alamat al um, the signs of the Day of Judgment, bi idnillah and we will announce these classes uh, in the near future, bi idnillah uh, Just before we conclude, are there any questions from anyone? Yes. Oh yes, Jazakallah khairan. So on Tuesdays, inshallah, uh, this coming Tuesday, we'll start Seerah classes, the Seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu And these are classes that, inshallah, will be very beneficial, bi-idhnillah. Naam. A very good question. So, the Prophet Sallallahu he teaches us in the Sunnah that <clears throat> helping your family member, you get twice the reward. If you help your cousin, your brother, your sister, your siblings, you get twice the reward. One is the reward of charity, and the second reward is uh, kinship, keeping in, tie, uh, in ties with your family. So you get double the reward. But if you help someone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is still a great reward. So. I would emphasize on helping someone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in this time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always remember you. What does Allah Azza wa say in Surah Insan? إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا that we don't expect anything from people. You help them for the sake of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, وَكَانَ اللَّهُ شَاكِرًا عَلِيمًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shakir and is alim, he is well informed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything that you do. So if you can help your family members, then this is better. But if you help any other Muslim, your reward is always with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always accept it with the right intention from the person. Allahu alam. Yes. There's a difference in the, uh, the opinion of the last ayah which was revealed to the Prophet mm. one of the Muslims in the Quran of Allah said, uh, have, Allah, when Allah says, I've perfected your religion for you. Yes. Is this, is this is a different opinion or is this? Jazakallah khairan, this is a very good point. So, in terms of the, the last verses of the Qur'an, <coughs> one of the last surahs that was revealed in one go, like a whole surah being revealed, does anyone remember? What was the surah that was the last to be revealed? Mm. 
uh, students you remember? Yes? Abdullah? This is one of the last full chapters, full surahs that was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ from the beginning until the end. And some of the companions, when they heard this, they started crying because they understood that this meant that the Prophet ﷺ was about to die, that the message was complete. The verses in Surah Al Ma'idah where it says, Al Yom Akmal to Lakum Dinakum, what it's meant to Alaikum Nirmati, what are these to Lakum Slama, Dina. These verses were revealed to the Prophet during the time of Hajj when the Prophet was giving the khutbah to the people. And these are from the last few verses that was revealed to the Prophet. And many of the companions, they've said, these are the last few verses. However, when the Prophet ﷺ came back to Medina, what was revealed? So some of the companions, you will find narrations where it says that these are the last verses. But the correct opinion among scholars is that these are not the last verses. The last verses that were revealed is what the Yawman. So this is the uh, the difference of opinion amongst the scholars. Wallahu a'lam. Barakallahu feekum. Khairun inshallah. We'll stop here. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.